Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be trying out three different pellets that you may want to try running through your air rifle. First up though, Rich Saunders is out getting to grips with some problematic grey squirrels that have tried to set up home in the roof space above some cottages. It's the beginning of October and I don't usually start my squirrel control until later in the, uh, in the month, ideally when the, when the clocks have gone back and the first frost has hit. As there's still a little bit of natural food about and the squirrels are hardwired into foraging about for it. But there are a couple of tenant cottages, cottages on the estate here and every now and then the grey squirrels make a nuisance of themselves by nesting in the roof spaces and you really don't want that because of the problems that can result from wires and cables and pipes being chewed through. Normally I tend to leave the squirrels here alone, but when the population causes problems for the cottages, the farmer asked me to knock the numbers back a little bit. It's been more than a year since I last shot up here, but I have got a hide already set up in the copse and a feeder, so hopefully they'll both still be standing. Nothing beats peanuts for squirrels, it's like catnip to them. So I'm going to fill the feeder up and put up a trail camera. I'm not planning on shooting for a few weeks yet, but I'll pop down once or twice more to top up the peanuts and to check the footage on the trail camera, which will give me an idea of how often and what times the squirrels are visiting. Well, time's moved on now and uh, we're well into October. Now I've been down several times to top up the feeder and also to check the trail camera footage. And it's shown plenty of activity, lots of uh, birds as well, badgers and deer as well. Um, to start with, the footage was, uh, there's a few squirrels come to the feeder, but most of them are just milling around on the floor, hunting around for the last bit of, of natural food. They're kind of hardwired to find the last bit of natural food. But the last week or so, the footage has shown more and more squirrels actually going onto the feeder and sitting there. So uh, we'll have to see how we get on. Well, I'd, I had a little wait for that one, to be honest, but uh, the good thing was it went straight to the feeder, it didn't muck around on the floor. So hopefully the rest of them will do that as well. So that one came right up to the, the feeder, sniffed around the bottom, and then for whatever reason, he went down again, I'm not sure why, um, ignored the peanuts on the feeder. Um, but I managed to track him down to the bottom of the tree and I got him right at the bottom of the tree um, with a headshot. Now headshot squirrels do tend to flick around quite a little bit, but it's just a nervous system shutting down. He's kicked himself into a, a hole at the bottom of the tree, but I can see that he's stone dead. So very quickly, because I'm hoping the squirrels have come on the feed now, um, the rifle I'm using is a Brokock BRK Pathfinder. It's a 12 foot pound 2-2 rifle. And to be honest, I prefer 2-2 for the sort of short to medium, uh, medium range shooting. Um, very, very compact, which is ideal in a hide. And this side lever 11 shot magazine um, is just ideal. You know, if I do injure a squirrel, I've got the opportunity to give it a very quick follow up shot. 
Held on top with a set of sports match mounts is an MTC King Cobra 4 to 16 by 50 scope. Um, and on the back of that, I've got my GoPro camera, so hopefully I can show some footage down the scope. Well, that's another one down. He was more interested in the, the dead squirrel on the floor, but eventually he found something to nibble on the floor. And I got a nice clear shot through some, um, some weeds on the ground there. And uh, yeah, put him down nice and clean. Well, that was only the second one from the feeder. They caught me napping, actually. I was having a slurp of tea when all of a sudden he appeared. Fortunately, he was stuffing his little furry face, uh, obsessed with the peanuts. Gave me a chance to put my mug away and get a nice clean shot on him. Well, a few minutes ago, I spotted a, f a squirrel through the undergrowth behind the tree. Now, whether that was the same one or a different one, I don't know, but he wasn't going to come up to the feeder. He just scrubbed around on the floor, found a peanut, I think. And then, uh, yeah, I was able to drop him with a really clean headshot from only about, I don't know, 18 meters or so. Well, that one was really close. It came up from behind me, actually, and was on the floor only about, I should imagine, 10 or 12 yards away. So I had to uh, adjust the parallax. And although I hit him pretty hard with a little bit of hold under, I just gave him a second shot just to make sure of the job, and he's, he's dead on the floor now. I've had to wait an awful long time for that one. I've had six, which is uh, not a bad start, but there's plenty more here. I've probably seen more squirrels running around uh, in the distance coming up to the feed and running off again. They're still distracted with, with natural food, I think. But six isn't a bad start, and I'll be back again before too long. Last job is to go and pick them all up. So thanks very much for watching.
Rich Saunders getting on top of the problematic greys there. Next up, I'm taking a look at three different ammo offerings from Range Right. Most of you probably know full well that different air guns shoot best with different pellets. Now, the only way to really find out which ammo is going to work best with your air gun is to experiment, but it does pay to start with quality ammo. Now, I thought I'd try a few different options, and Range Right have sent me three different kinds of 177 pellet to put through their paces. Now, I've got the Crossman Premier Domed, the Crossman Premier Hollow Point, and the Benjamin Match Grade Single Die. Right, let's kick off with the Crossman Premier Domed, which weighs 7.9 grains in 177 calibre. Now, it's quite a stubby round head pellet with a stated head size of 4.5 millimetres, and they cost $15.95 for a tin of 500. Now that tin doesn't include a foam disc as some pellets do, however, these ones arrived looking incredibly tidy and in fact, I'd go as far as to say they looked flawless to me. Now I tested these pellets through my Reximex Pretensis, shooting five shop groups at 20, 30 and 40 meters. Now, there are lots of facts and figures in there as to how they perform. I want to get it dead right for you, so I'm going to refer to my notes now. So, running through the Reximex Pretensis, the Crossman Premier Domed gave a muzzle energy of 11.1 .1 foot-pounds. Now, uh, variation was within 7 feet per second over a string of 10 shots while checking over the chrono. Now, working from a 30 meter zero at 20 meters, they produced a five shot group measuring just six millimeters from center to center, and that was striking seven millimeters high. Now at 30 meters, the five shot group still measured just seven millimeters from center to center, and was obviously bang on target in terms of height because that was my set zero. Now at 40 meters, the group was 15 millimeters from center to center and had dropped 18 millimeters from that 30 meter zero. Now as far as I'm concerned that is pretty good going. Moving on to the Crossman Premier Hollow Point. Now these pellets are a bit of a departure for me because I tend to do the vast majority of my shooting using standard domed or roundhead type pellets. Now like the Crossman Premier domed these pellets also weigh 7.9 grains in 177 calibre they have a stated head size of 4.5 millimetres and they also cost $15.95 for a tin of 500. Now again, there wasn't a foam disc in the tin, but they looked really tidy and arrived in absolutely perfect condition. Right, so referring to my notes again so I get all the data correct for you. So the hollow points also returned a muzzle energy of 11.1 .1 foot-pounds but they were slightly less consistent with a variation that stayed within 10 feet per second over that string of 10 shots over the chrono. Now I will say from the off that grouping at 40 meters wasn't tight enough for me to consider these pellets as being a viable option for targeting live quarry at that range. So and that was also no doubt because of the hollow point just causing drag and these pellets simply aren't as aerodynamic for that reason. So what I decided to do was to take my five shot groups at 20, 25 and 30 metres, working from a 25 metre zero, so as not to push these pellets too hard. Um, and actually, they were surprisingly good over those slightly shorter ranges. So at 20 metres, the group measured eight millimetres from centre to centre and was striking seven millimetres high. Now at 25 metres, that I'd zeroed at, the group was 12 millimetres from centre to centre and was obviously bang on zero. At 30 metres, the group had opened up to 19 millimetres from centre to centre and had dropped 22 millimetres. Now, that grouping may not be quite as impressive as the domed version, um, but that 30 uh, metre group 
could almost be covered by a five pence piece. Now, you've also got to remember that you've got that extra wallop being delivered by the hollow point pellet. So the last pellet up is the Benjamin Match Grade Single Die. Now, this is also a 4.5 millimeter pellet, but being slightly heavier at 10.5 grains, I was expecting good things from this one because more weight generally tends to tighten up the grouping at longer range. So uh, these pellets retail at $19.95 for a tin of 500. Now that isn't cheap, but quality costs, and that still works out at just under 4p per pop. As the name suggests, these pellets are all made from a single die, which should give a major boost to consistency of production. Now, the distinctive black tin does have a foam disc in it, and these pellets arrived looking incredibly tidy, very cleanly produced, and absolutely flawless in finish. They also felt particularly hard. Right, so to the facts and figures. So these pellets pushed the power up uh, slightly to 11.3 foot-pounds, and were the most consistent over the chrono, with a variation of just five feet per second over that 10 shot string. Now back to a 30 meter zero, uh, the 20 meter group measured seven millimeters from center to center and struck 11 millimeters high. At 30 meters, obviously they were dead on zero and produced a five shot group measuring 10 millimeters from center to center. At 40 meters, the group had dropped 26 millimeters and measured just 14 millimeters from center to center. So that was the best in test through my gun. Um, that 40 meter group was actually let down by one pellet and the remaining four measured just seven millimeters from center to center. For my money, I think I would be happy to pay the bit extra for the Benjamin match grade single die. Now, they did drop a bit between 30 and 40 meters, but it only amounts to about an inch, and I think I'd be happy to compensate for that with a bit of holdover to take advantage of that grouping and the extra wallop delivered by that 10.5 grain pellet. The groups that I have shown here are the best of several shot at each range, but they are consistent with the others, and I believe they give a fair representation of how each of these pellets performed through my Reximex Pretensis. Now, I shot those groups from the support of a bench, and I was also fortunate to have calm conditions for my testing. However, I also reckon that, that heavier 10.5 grain single die pellet would probably also hold out a little better in a breeze. Apologies to those of you who like your pellet tests to be super technical, but I do think that my simple review has given a pretty good representation of what these pellets have done through my air gun. Now, as I said at the outset, different air guns shoot best with different pellets, but I do reckon that these three are certainly worth a try if you shoot a 177 caliber air gun. Now, as a sample, they give you a couple of weight options in your classic roundhead or domed type pellet, plus you've got that hollow point wild card, which I think could be a brilliant option for close to mid-range pest control. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back with more in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to take a look at the subscription offers that we have for Airgun World magazine. Now, you should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. So, I'll be back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.